With more and more people developing stomach issues and food sensitivities, it's important to separate the fact from the fiction when it comes to gut health and digestion. So joining us now is Dr. Melissa Hirschberg, who is going to help us do just that. Welcome back to What She Said. Thank you. Okay, so, so let's start at the beginning. What exactly are gut bacteria? So we have trillions of bacteria inside our bodies, Mm -hmm. uh, and most of them are found within our gut, meaning within our digestive system and intestine. So we have hundreds of different species that line our colon and intestines, and these bacteria, it's important for them to be in balance, and that's what we consider um, a healthy gut microbiota or a healthy gut flora. And uh, when they're not in balance, how would you know? So it's hard to know exactly, but typically people might have symptoms of bloating or gas or constipation or diarrhea or just different digestive health symptoms. And that could trigger us to think, well, what about our gut flora? Let's think about our um, gut health. And it's it's tough because there's no specific way to test it per se. Um, so it's one of those things we just always have to keep in mind and do our best to just try to create a good balance. So let me ask you, is this something that would would be naturally in balance and then we eat something or do something that causes an imbalance or are some people just born with an imbalance? So the food we eat um, creates the type of flora we have in our colon. So I mean, there's always a genetic component to everything. So, you know, different people have different gut microbiota, and it's unique and individual. But we can also influence it by the foods we eat. So when we eat a diet that's rich in um, fruits and vegetables and beans and legumes and whole grains, so good fiber sources, the chances of us having a healthy gut microbiota are higher than if we were to eat a diet that's rich in, you know, high sugar, high fat and processed foods. Now, fiber can affect other things because Christine, for example, has just been told to take psyllium because Mm -hmm. she has... Higher cholesterol. Higher cholesterol yeah. than, than my doctor would be is yeah. comfortable with. So it's true. So fiber is good because it can impact our cholesterol levels, especially soluble fiber. When we include that in our diet, that can help lower our cholesterol. And there's also a link between a healthy gut flora and lowered cholesterol and lower inflammation in general. So so what would some of the symptoms be? You, said, you mentioned bloating mm-hmm. uh, or gas to find out that mm-hmm. you didn't have... So Bad it's hard, it's hard to say. So when you think about symptoms, I mean, there's been a link between, and the, I mean, this is sort of like a new science, and there's just more mm-hmm. and more becoming known about it. But there's been a link shown between a healthy gut flora um, and inflammation, weight, skin health, immunity. So if you're just not feeling as healthy as you should be, in other words, if you're feeling, you know, that you're gassy and bloated, and you don't seem to be deep digesting foods well, or if you're feeling like all of a sudden you're getting sick more often or your skin's out of whack, you're breaking out, obviously go see your doctor and rule out potential causes. But if they don't find anything, you can think, hmm, maybe let's look at my diet and maybe let's consider, have I been taking a lot of antibiotics recently? And if you've been on antibiotics, well, that can wipe out some of the good bacteria in your colon. And that might trigger you to think, well, maybe my gut flora is not in balance or as good as it should be. Or you can look at your diet and think, you know what, I've been stressed lately. I haven't been sleeping well. I've been going through drive throughs I've been eating a lot of processed food. Hmm, maybe this is my body's way of telling me that, you know, my gut flora is out of balance. It's funny that you should say that because Kate and I were just talking about the fact that when we grew up, I don't think we ever talked about, I didn't know about antibiotics until yeah. I had children yeah. who had ear infections and, mm-hmm. and the doctor was saying, try and give them some yogurt and et cetera yeah. to rebuild that gut balance. But I remember remember myself having um, was going to the washroom a lot mm-hmm. and didn't and didn't pay any attention to it and thought oh I'll just it'll work itself out and then my hair started to fall out a little bit and I was finally went to the doctor and she said you know you need antibiotics your whole your whole gut bacteria level is way off and has to be restored. So she's been probiotics. 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 Not antibiotics. Yeah. (laughs) And that's interesting. Right. So sometimes if that's the case, and then, you know, we want to think about getting probiotics from, you know, different sources. So always look, I always like to look at natural ways first before rushing to take, you know, a probiotic type Mm -hmm. pill. So 
probiotics we can get uh, in fermented foods. So the most the thing that comes to mind most is yogurt. So you want to make sure that you get a natural plain yogurt as opposed to a sweetened yogurt because then yeah. the sugar might do the opposite of what we intended to do. Is so, Greek yogurt better mm-hmm. or worse for that? So I, I don't, I don't say quite understand the difference between Greek yogurt and other yogurt. A lot of protein. Protein, more, more, more protein. protein. More yeah. protein, but is it better for your gut health? Not per se. No. Okay. No, I don't know if necessarily the probiotic or like the bacteria culture is higher in Greek versus non. Mm. Um, but what's important is that you don't get one that has a lot of uh, added sugar. Just plain. Right. Yeah. Just so plain. go with plain. And I always say to people, the best thing to do is get a plain yogurt, a natural yogurt, and then add fruit to it to sweeten it, like natural fruit, like berries. And then you get... A double effect because you get the probiotics from the yogurt and then the fruit are high in fiber. And so you'll get what we call prebiotics. So those are foods that are going to feed the healthy bacteria. So the yogurt's giving us the bacteria. The berries are stimulating the bacteria to grow. Okay. I, I have that for breakfast every morning, but I also add ground flax. Great. So and that, that's another that's form for... of fiber. Okay. Yeah. All right. Mm-hmm. So what about if all that isn't working? Are there any kinds of supplements or anything you can take that can help get you back in balance? So, you know, if you're con- – so, for instance, let's say you're constipated. So mm-hmm. someone might be constipated and they might turn to, you know, a probiotic, like looking at their diet saying, okay, so let's increase the amount of fiber we're having in our diet. Mm-hmm. Let's increase the amount of uh, probiotics. And if that's not working, then I would look at – You know, are we drinking enough water and are we doing enough exercise? Make sure we're getting the fluids in, make sure we're doing the exercise. And then if you're still bound up, well, that's when you can turn to something over the counter. So you could use like a gentle gentle laxative like Senecot, which has senicides that are a a natural way of relieving constipation. They use the senna plant, which has been grown and harvested for years for its laxative properties. And there's other things like you mentioned as well, psyllium, um, stool softeners. You can look to what over-the-counter remedies. Obviously, you don't want to be taking something chronically, but this is for just the occasional relief of constipation. And you don't want to take something chemical. You want to take something yeah, the natural, pretty, uh, pretty natural. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. you're trying to rebuild something as opposed to... So, and that's, I mean, it's, you take it overnight it's not going it's not going to be it's not like that stuff you have before you have a colonoscopy that's going to no it's more gentle so you, you would do take you know something like Seneca you would take oh, you know before bed and it usually works within um, you know 6 to 12 hours so overnight so that when you wake up in the morning uh, you'd be more likely to have Well I think it's pretty bit. natural given that it's been I, I, as I understand it a natural laxative for like 3,500 years yeah. and your grandmother taught My you how to yeah, I used to make her, she had, well she actually had bowel cancer uh. um, but I used to make her centipod tea she yeah. had like a jar full of yeah like centipods they almost looked like a snow pea pod but brown yeah. and we used to make tea out of that because I don't think something like Senecot existed Back in a pill no, form. People no. used to use the, yeah. you know, the actual Senna yeah, exactly. plant. Exactly. And sometimes that's all you go. need is just a, just a little gentle push, yeah. and then things start working. Yeah, especially <laughs> if you've been on certain medications. So when we yeah. see it prescribed a lot is, you know, if you've been in the hospital. So uh, other things that are associated with constipation are hospital, spa- uh, hospital stays, um, immobility, like if you're not moving around or walking around, or if you're on prescription painkiller type medication. So after an operation or if you've had pain, those sometimes affect the bowel to slow it down, um, in which case then, yeah, you'd want to take something like um, a Senna product. Senna cut. Where can people go to get more information on this? If you want more information on Senna or on uh, constipation, you can go to senacot.ca. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Melissa Hirschberg, thank you so much for joining us Thanks. today. Well, she's-